Good evening, everyone. Today, I want to talk about idiocy. Not just any idiocy either. The idiocy of a certain social group, a certain type, a certain collective brought together under a common idiocy. The cult of toxic masculinity. Those who are united by an almost religious desire to maintain and defend toxic masculinity. Today, I want to talk about the charming people whose entire personalities, and entire existence for that matter, are a textbook case of toxic masculinity. Yes, today we are tackling those intellectual titans. I know, quite the task, isn't it? Firstly, we need to clarify what I am actually talking about. If my rant is to be effective, it must at least be direct. Now, to define toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity describes the manifestation of traits typically associated with masculinity in ways that are harmful both to the individual and or the society. Examples include men desperately suppressing their emotions to seem tough, men viewing violence as the first go-to way of solving problems because violence is the epitome of dominance and dominance is typically considered to be a masculine trait. Men objectifying women and being misogynistic on one hand and homophobic and transphobic on the other in a desperate attempt to prove that they are hyper-heterosexual as any good man should be. Men being super insecure and self-hating all the time because they fail to live up to weird social standards. And I could go on. Toxic masculinity describes the harm caused by social expectations and standards that society assigns to men. It simply claims that sometimes traits associated with masculinity end up manifesting in harmful ways. This is a very defensible idea, and a very useful one for analysing society. There is some irony in men who pride themselves on their masculinity, becoming terribly sensitive and offended by the idea of toxic masculinity. If this idea offends you, I am sorry, but you really need to get over it. This is not the same as calling men evil, and if you think it is, you should really be working on developing a brain. Oh wait, you are. This video will provide the brainless with a brain. Toxic masculinity does not call men evil. It just says some social standards that are forced onto men are harmful. The idea of toxic masculinity literally exists to look out for men and to diagnose the harm that social standards can do to them. Toxic masculinity as a concept exists to protect and look out for the well-being of men and everyone else. It exposes harmful social standards and expectations. It doesn't call men evil. Some people do call men evil, but these people are idiots, and they are not an excuse to double down and embrace the worst expressions of masculinity. Toxic masculinity as a concept does not assert that all ideas and traits associated with masculinity are inherently toxic. You can be strong and courageous without being a textbook case of toxic masculinity. Many traits associated with masculinity can manifest in healthy, useful, and productive ways. There is, however, an inherent evil to the tying of these things to gender. In doing so, we force these standards onto people when we assign them a gender at birth. The problem emerges from the stupid practice of assigning these expectations at birth, rather than just letting people decide who they want to be. This leads to insecurity and self-hatred when people inevitably feel they have failed to live up to assigned standards. Many of these standards are literally unachievable for people, and even the ones that are achievable are still stupid. Why should people live their whole lives enslaved to a harmful, oppressive label? Miserable actors acting out a social role rather than being themselves. People desperately trying to fit a mould rather than do what they want to do. 
These are ridiculous gendered expectations restrict and control people. This is true of the expectations on both sides of the traditional gender divide. Toxic masculinity describes the harm caused by these standards on the male side. Once again, there is some irony in the fact that many of the same people who say society doesn't focus on men's issues enough then get mad when we talk about toxic masculinity and actually look at the serious issues that are hurting men. Gendered expectations are ultimately restrictive and controlling, and that is all they are. Gender expectations will enforce their will by marginalising individuals who break with them, by inciting hostility and contempt towards them, and by propagating self-hatred and insecurity within them. Ultimately, gender is an authoritarian construct in that it exists to impose unnecessary control and restriction upon the liberty of the individual. Gendered standards are of literally no value. They just deprive people of their happiness, freedom, and ability to self-actualize. They deprive each and every one of us of our liberty by assigning and enforcing unnecessary, unjust, and harmful social expectations that restrict and control us. Gender standards are immoral and worthy of abolition. They restrict us and control us. They are a form of tyranny. They stop us from being our truest, freest, and happiest selves. The tying of courage and strength to male masculinity limits the potential of women to meet these standards. Doing so is viewed as antithetical to their position as women. This idea obviously restricts and controls women, and is very stupid. Many potentially great women have undoubtedly been reduced to nothingness due to the oppression of their courage and strength by these weird social expectations. Gender expectations and standards harm people by restricting and controlling them. These standards are authoritarian, unnecessary, unjust, and harmful. Anyway, that is my rant on gender out of the way. Actually, it probably isn't. We need to get back to the more specific subject of this video. The community united in defense of toxic masculinity. The cult of toxic masculinity. The men who aggressively defend and uphold their own oppression. The group of people united by an almost religious practice of toxic masculinity. The collective brought together by common idiocy and a shared desire to be enslaved to a harmful label and set of expectations. Perhaps the word idiocy is too cruel here, given that every one of these individuals is themselves an unfortunate victim of toxic masculinity. Every social group is understood through shared characteristics. What shared characteristics unite the group that I describe? These people are brought together by shared toxic masculinity and various harmful outgrowths from it, such as misogyny, transphobia, and homophobia. These people are brought together by a shared love of maintaining and defending toxic masculinity, a shared fight for their own oppression. These people are brought together by a shared love of making their insecurity everyone else's problem. And these people are brought together by a shared propensity for immediate and uncontrollable salivation whenever Jordan Peterson or Elon Musk is mentioned. The primary goal of this group is, as I have remarked, defending and upholding their own oppression. What a strong, dominant, and courageous thing to be doing! More irony. The irony here is endless. Tough, courageous, independent, free-thinking men who eagerly enslaved themselves to some of the worst parts of the label they were assigned at birth. I don't know whether to laugh or pity them. On the one hand, I feel bad for them. On the other, they are a joke. And on the third hand, they harm society. This trio of facts is quite common. Many groups are pitiful, laughable, and harmful all in one. The group which I label the cult of toxic masculinity is a textbook example of such a group. I really can't get over the supreme irony of men who supposedly believe in strength and courage uniting to defend, 
reaffirm and maintain structures that oppress, restrict and harm them. Men coming together to fight alongside one another for their own enslavement. They talk about how strong and tough they are, only to become immediately triggered when they see one feminine man. They talk about how strong and tough they are, only to save for weeks after seeing one feminist on the internet. These defenders of toxic masculinity are unironically the most spineless cowardly creatures on the planet. Masculinity is about being strong, brave, free-thinking, and courageous. This is the mantra they repeat as they unquestioningly enslave themselves to the social standards that they desperately siphon every last drop of their non-existent self-worth out of. These people prove the reality of toxic masculinity. In their rejection of that idea, they reveal its accuracy. They talk about the cowardice of the modern man as they tremble at the very thought of doing anything other than fitting their assigned mould. They whine about the submissive while submitting themselves unquestioningly to a label. They accept subservience without question and convince themselves that it is freedom. They denounce others for degeneracy while they do nothing but defend and reinforce the harmful social ideas that hurt them and so many others. The cult of toxic masculinity is built off of insecurity, projection, self-hatred, and pathetic, cringeworthy attempts to not just fit a mould, but to impose that mould upon others. Those who do not wish to force a mould upon you will not look down upon you when you fail to fit it. These people will not only enslave themselves to the social tyranny, they will fight tooth and nail for their own oppression, but they will fight tooth and nail for yours as well. If social constructs had boots, they would be licked more than any other. They promote a subservience to the label. Few things are weaker and more submissive than that. It could easily be said that the greatest slave is the one that is convinced his fight for enslavement is a fight for liberty. And these people are a perfect example of that. Although their desire to be enslaved to a social construct is about as subtle as their self-hatred, they have still managed to convince themselves that this is anything but. And of course they have. To do otherwise would be to acknowledge the inescapable absurdity that lies at the heart of their activities. To do otherwise would be to acknowledge that unthinking devotion to the ideals of masculinity is itself at odds with those very ideals. The strong and courageous do not sell themselves into slavery, be that slavery to a man or a social mold. But these people do just that. They exist in a state of constant absurdity and confusion. They desperately try to impose restrictive, controlling, and harmful social standards onto themselves. It really is something else. You want to be big, tough, strong, and courageous? You want to be masculine? Awesome. Be my guest. I only ask two things. Do it because you actually enjoy it. And don't force it upon people or look down at those who aren't just like you. Don't force your insecurity upon others. Do not pursue these conventionally masculine goals in a desperate attempt to satisfy your insecurities. You can keep piling dirt into the hole, but it is bottomless. You will get nowhere. The first of such an insecurity is insatiable, and feeding it is a mistake. Do not let insecurity become your entire personality, and dictate your entire worldview. To allow such a thing is to allow for the enslavement of oneself. It is to accept harmful restriction and control for no benefit. It is to desire subservience. To force such a thing upon yourself is an act of immorality against yourself. To force such a thing upon another is an act of immorality against the other. Every action is a justification that goes both ways. In doing such a thing, you justify others forcing subservience upon themselves and upon you. No rational actor would justify such a thing. This is an irrational justification, and one irrational actor will make sure to avoid. This is not a precedence. 
This is not a standard that a rational actor would ever establish. To do such a thing is indicative of great irrationality. I know this is quite the disorganized rant, but it is a well-deserved rant. I have witnessed the growth of this movement, the cult of toxic masculinity, both online and in real life, and I cannot resist the urge to pull their idiotic ideas apart. They look down upon those who are not identical to them. They look down on those who defy and rebel against oppressive labels. And they do this while LARPing as the strong and courageous. They promote their own slavery while they LARP about their strength. They look down on those who are strong, brave, and courageous enough to break with the oppressive, restricting, and controlling gender norms of society. Those who break with conventional ideas of masculinity in ways that contribute to the creation of a freer, more moral, and happier society. This is a true act of bravery, and it takes great courage. It is an act that risks social marginalization, facing society's vitriol, and facing one's own ability to unleash insecurity and self-hatred upon oneself. The cult of toxic masculinity looks down at these weak degenerates while they enslave themselves to a pointless, harmful social standard. They LARP about strength, courage, and bravery while they live in constant fear of being their true selves. Strength, courage, bravery, these words are sapped of any meaning. They are destroyed by those who pretend to recognize their value. They have bastardized and perverted these concepts by allowing their own insecurities to dictate their views and the imposition of those views upon others. Cracking down on those who defy the dictatorial label gives them an opportunity to demonstrate their unwavering devotion to it. Just as the slave bows to his master, they signal their unwavering subservience as they label the cowards those who dare to be free. The coward is the one who escapes the immoral oppression and restriction of the label. The strong man is the one who makes himself its slave without question and I need not go on. I have repeated many times, and in many ways, what could have been said far more succinctly. I have done so because my astonishment at the blatant and laughable absurdity of the cult of toxic masculinity would not permit such a thing. Toxic masculinity is a problem, and nobody proves that better than those who have embraced it and seek to force it upon others. Nobody proves toxic masculinity as well as those who become immediately infuriated by the very idea that masculine social standards are not perfect. These are the people who are the most enslaved. The toxic masculinity and the closely interrelated misogyny, homophobia, and transphobia is disgusting. Toxic standards of masculinity impose an expectation of hyper-heterosexuality. This materializes in vicious misogyny and objectification on the one hand, and transphobia and homophobia on the other, that is supposed to indicate this apparently desirable trait. Not only does the toxic masculinity oppress those who follow it and who it is forced upon, toxic masculinity so finely connects with all of these other immoralities. It hurts and oppresses everyone. The cancerous immorality floods throughout all of society, and affects everyone. None are left untouched by its immorality. Toxic masculinity, the cult that defends it with religious fervor, and gender as a whole, needs to be eliminated. For the sake of liberty, for the sake of self-actualization, for the sake of happiness, for the sake of letting us be truest, freest, happiest, and most comfortable selves. The defenders of this enslavement should abandon their posts. Pursue strength, courage, and bravery they may, and if that is what they desire, then they should. But enslave themselves and others to harmful social standards, they will not. Let the cult of toxic masculinity rot with the worst aspects of gender that it seeks to perpetuate. Let these people be known as some of the most devoted advocates for their own enslavement 
to ever walk this earth. 